to uh, the first May knitting chat here on Ina Knits. My name is Ina and I am a Norwegian knitter. I live in the central or middle part of the country in a place called Trendelag, close to Trondheim, which is Norway's third largest city. And yeah, I live here together with my family and our dog Billy and yeah, I love to knit and I love to chat about my knitting with you. So a warm welcome to you all, uh, whether you've been here before or whether you're new to this channel. I wanted to come on and give you a little insight on what's been on my needles lately and I'm also going to announce the giveaway winners from the previous episode back in April and yeah that is also going to give you the summary my knitting summary of April so yeah uh, today is a very very hot day here in Norway where I live. It's unusually hot for early mid-May. We have almost 30 degrees Celsius out. I'm wearing t-shirt and a shirt and it is so warm. I try to sit outdoors on my terrace and drink some coffee uh, for lunch, but uh, it actually was too warm. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not complaining. This is just pure luxury for us. Um, it could have been like I've experienced snow, I've experienced heavy rains and cold winds and all of the season seasons in May previous years so yeah we are just happy that we have a little bit of summer already here in May oh yeah and last week from Wednesday to Sunday we spent in a sailboat we were sailing down south in our way um, me and Christian my partner and Billy, uh, together with Christian's father, and that was lovely as well. Some days out on the sea, and we had some cold weather and some warm weather, and I brought my knitting, of course, so I managed to knit quite a bit while on the sailboat. It was lovely. Um, today is um, May. Ooh, 14th, yeah, and in Norway we are preparing for May 17th on Friday. So this week is a little bit busy. If you're not familiar, May 17th is our Constitution Day and it is a huge thing here. It's a bank holiday and everybody dresses up in their national costumes that we call bunad and yeah if you have a bunad you know that there's a little bit of <laughs> preparations involved before you can actually put it on and start wearing it um, and this year my son he is in fifth fifth grade in elementary school we are in charge of all of the parents are hosting 17th of May at school. So we are having um, yeah, we are having a little cafe or a big cafe actually, selling ice cream, cakes, coffee, soda, popcorn, lots of things and there's a lot of free games for the kids. There's songs to be sing, uh, to be sung, and yeah, there's just 
lots of things going on on 17th of May and of course we are having parades with school band playing and yeah lots of lots of cheering and I don't know Norwegianness <laughs> so yeah I'm going to bake I'm going to prepare the shirts for our bunals, go over them, check that everything is okay. Um, and that's this week. <laughs> yeah. I hope you're doing super well and that you are happily knitting on whatever makes you happy. That is so important, I think. So, I think I will start off with showing you um, what I have finished since my last episode in late April. So if you have watched me before or specifically the last knitting podcast back in late April, uh, you would know that I started a knit along called Norwegian Independent Knitting Designers. And it all happens over at Ravelry or on Ravelry. Um, I have a group there called Ina Knits. You can search it on the forums tab uh, and search for Ina Knits with capital I and capital K. And uh, there I, I have um, started four threads. It is one thread with a list of all of the Norwegian independent knitting designers that I know of. And I've gotten so much feedback and help gathering together uh, designers for that list. So thank you so much if you have contributed. Uh, I really appreciate it because I don't know everybody and uh, one of the aims of this knit along for me was to um, get a better picture of who's out there and focus more on exploring uh, new to me knitting designers. There are so many amazing and talented designers um, by independent, I mean that they publish patterns in their own name um, mainly and not through big yarn houses or yarn producers. And yeah, one of them, of one of the designers on that list is Hette Stick. And I have known um, her or Hette Strick. She is uh, both a yarn dyer and um, and dyes beautiful yarn by hand and she also um, makes a lot of beautiful patterns um, and I've seen many knitting this specific knit lately because it was part of a knit along hosted by a Norwegian-speaking knitting podcast. Um, and this is a cowl. I will show you now. This is uh, the Anna Ulava Hals. Hals is cowl in Nor Norwegian. And this stru structure stitch pattern is absolutely beautiful and it goes all the way around the cowl and as you can see it's a little bit longer uh, on the front and the idea is that it will keep your chest area warm when you're wearing a coat So I think the fit is so nice. It is not too tight and but it stays up in a really nice way and it's so so warm. It's way too warm now. <laughs> yeah. 
so pretty. Yeah, I I must say this is a very quick knit. I knitted it, I believe, a couple of hours one evening and then in the car on our way down south. I think I spent probably three, three or four hours, if not less. And I've used two yarns that I found in my stash. One of them is this one. This is um, Brooklyn Tweed Loft in the colorway postcard. This is the remains from a project that I knitted on some years back, which was the Weekender Sweater by Andrea Maori. It's a really pretty almost oatmeal color with some flexes of red. And I paired it together with this. This is a very, very old ball of yarn. It's some kind of silky mohair. Um, it could have been drops, like Melody or something, a base that I carried years ago. But I'm not sure. I lost the ball band. So I paired these two, these two together and I got this pretty fabric. It's almost like pale lavender and you still can see some of these um, red flexes from the Brooklyn Tweed Loft, which I love. So yeah, just need to sew in a couple of ends and then I'm finished. So this is my first finished object. <laughs> this is my first, first finished, oh god. <laughs> this is my first finished object for my own knit along. Um, the knit along started on May 1st and as I said, I created four threads. I think I forgot to talk about three of them. So the first thread is the list and if you have some additions to that list, please let me know in the comments in that thread and I will add them to the list of course. I have put up names to each of the designer. I have also researched how many patterns they have published in Norwegian and how many patterns they have published in English. And I have marked each and every designer with a Norwegian flag and then uh, in brackets I have put how many patterns available they have in that specific language and the same for English. So if you don't understand Norwegian and you would like to research patterns published in English only, it would be easier for you to kind of see uh, what's available for you. So yeah, but uh, that is the first thread and then I have opened one conversation thread for Norwegian speakers and one conversation thread for English speakers, a kind of a chatter thread and yeah, so over there you can inspire each other and uh, ask questions or yeah, whatever. And then there is one thread for finished objects. And in that thread um, you can publish or put in photo and specify the pattern you have knit and the designer you have knit from. Uh, so yeah, and it's for like finished objects only. So I will draw winners from that thread. Um, I'm planning to draw the first winner in July one or two winners then. So if you're early with your finishes and put it into that thread, uh, you will be in the drawing for the first two prizes. And then I will draw again um, early fall 
like s September, I would guess. And then I will have a big drawing in around December 1st or 2nd after the knit along has ended. So yeah, that was some info about that knit along, which I am very excited about actually. Um, and it seems like a lot of you found that one a fun one too. So that's cool. I have a couple of other finishes. And the first one is these mittens. This is the Jenny mitten by Lisa Engdahl. Um, I think I was finished with one of them last time we spoke and I finished the other one shortly after. Um, it's a beautiful like Selbu inspired pattern. You have these flowers on the front and some mini flowers in the palm of the hand. And even some a pretty motif on the thumb. Um, this was a very lovely pattern to knit up. So yeah, here they are. I haven't washed or blocked them yet. And as you can see, I need to sew in some ends. But I really, really enjoyed knitting them. They were just pure fun. And I think they turned out so great. And these were really what inspired me to start the knit along in the first place. So Lisa Engdahl, she's also a very talented designer and she has her own yarn, uh, indie dyed yarn brand called Ultrasne. Um, these mittens were knit out of Fienöl, this pretty cornflower blue. It is Fienöl from Rauma uh, in the color 436. Oh, 4036. And the contrast is this pretty speckled hand dyed by Verbit. It's a Hillesvog Alsk. So it's pure new wool as well. So pretty. So these two to combine together. Ah, oh, I love them so much. And they fit me perfectly, so I'm going to keep these myself. Um, after that, I casted on a new pair of socks that I will donate to the Salvation Army as part of the knit along of Fröken Petrina. In Norwegian, it's called Socker som varmer insta. And um, yeah, it's kind of a knit along that uh, inspires and encourages others to knit socks and send them to the Salvation Army in Oslo and they will hand them out to people in need. So this is my pair number, I think it's four, pair number four, or maybe three. <laughs> oh, I don't remember exactly, but I have knitted two other pairs for sure. Yeah, maybe it's pair number three then. Um, this specific yarn is a uh, Jarbo, it's a melon raggi. Base. I don't remember the colorway, but it is a pretty self-striping yarn. And 
I've knitted approximately size 39, European size 39. Just a plain vanilla sock that I knitted on needle number 3 millimeter. So yeah, three finishes in approximately two, two and a half weeks. I, yeah, while we are on the subject of socks, I can show you my next Salvation Army donation sock. <laughs> it's this one. And yeah, I'm just past the heel turn, as you can probably tell. I'm knitting this sock the same way as I knitted this. Um, I'm using Jadwo Melondragi again. I have two, or I had two balls of Jadwo Melondragi. This kind of burgundy red and this self-striping yarn. So for this pair I'm just striping in the remains of the previous pair. I had like 18 grams in total left of that ball of yarn and I just recently weighed what I had left now and it turns out I have 9 grams left so I need to stop the striping sequence right now. So I'm, I am considering to add in another stripe of something else that I have in my stash just to kind of continue the striping all the way and to make sure that I have enough of this as the main color for both socks. So yeah, more socks on the needles. Um, in addition to that, what I've kind of used most knitting time on these past, yeah, two weeks is a shawl. I, on May 1st, I started to kind of browse through a lot of patterns and a local, kind of local to me, a pattern designer called Fjell Rosa. Um, she has just recently come out with a new shawl design and I suddenly felt like knitting a shawl. <laughs> I haven't knit a shawl in ages, feels like. And yeah, she had, she released her pattern in late April. It's a crescent shaped shawl um, with lots of lace and she had a discount going for the end days of April and then I just suddenly purchased it and I cast on on May 1st. So yeah, here we are. And it is long. I can't even show you. I suspect that it is as long as my wingspan right now. And it is very quite stretchy too. So yeah, this is the pattern. And it's stretched out. <laughs> yeah, it is a pattern repeat or a pattern section that you kind of repeat over and over for as long as you want basically and then it will be um, a kind of a different border at the bottom edge. So yeah, I I'm using a stash yarn, as I do. I was considering to use um, a beautiful blue sock yarn that I found in my stash. This is this shawl is intended for one skein 
uh, like uh, 100 gram hank of yarn. But I found this yarn in my stash. It is Lane's de Nord um, Poema. I've had it for quite some time and I believe that this is a yarn that I bought in Copenhagen in Denmark some years back. And as you can see it's a gradient. So it is very light out here. It's almost like an um, beige oatmeal and then it transitions into a lilac color and then it goes into a green and the funny thing is that I didn't realize that I had green in this until I started to pick the and from the center. Um, I actually thought that it transitioned from lilac into a dark dark like um, aubergine or gray or something like that. So that was a surprise. But I think it turns out pretty nice. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of determined to just keep knitting on this until I have used up the entire yarn cake. Even though this is 150 grams and not 100 grams. And the meterage is 600 meters instead of 400. So it will be a pretty large shawl in the end, I think. Sorry for my barking dog. I think somebody just came home and I will probably be interrupted soon. Um, I am knitting this roll in on 4mm needles. I just recently needed a needle for something else so I've put on some stoppers to keep it secure on the needle. Now we'll come back to this shortly after a small break because I am kind of occupied right now on another project that needs to be completed within a time frame. I have a deadline. But yeah, it was fun to knit a shawl again. Definitely. Even now when I have like hundreds and hundreds of stitches on the needle. It's still kind of fun and very meditative to just repeat, you know, that you get into a kind of a flow when you do the same stitches over and over and over and over. It's really, really wonderful. So yeah, I've been kind of a f on the fence if I should show you this project now or not because it's meant to be a surprise um, and it's meant to be a birthday gift for somebody special but I, I'm not quite sure whether she watches the podcast or not she used to do so but I don't think she does anymore so I'm taking my chances. <laughs> yeah. Um, so another Norwegian independent knitting designer is Venke Roal. And she is so talented and wonderful and have so many beautiful patterns out. And she's very good at translating her patterns into English. So yeah, I forgot to tell you but both, both the Jenny Mittens and this shawl, which I also totally forgot to tell you what, what it is, is it called. This is the Danse mot vår shawl by Fjelle Rosa design. And it is not available in English 
right now. It might be, but you can always ask the designer if you're interested in a translated pattern. Um, but the next pattern that I'm showing you now uh, is available both in Norwegian and in English. And this is absolutely stunning. I, it's been on my wish list for a long, long time. And I kind of had my eye on it um, when I knew that somebody special in my life is having her birthday. It's a rather a big birthday coming up soon. Uh, so, yeah. So I have cast it on this. Isn't it pretty? This is a um, pullover or sweater by Venke Roal. It is called Vilfreda. And it's kind of the same vibe as, you know, the love note from Tinkanitz or the Renanculus maybe. It's a little bit more fitted than the Renanculus, I think. So you have this pretty almost lace or stitch pattern and then you have some beautiful cables on the yoke section. And yeah, it is rather airy and a little bit drapey. I'm knitting on millimeter, six millimeter needles. Um, Vilfreda. And when I completed uh, the yoke section here, I just felt like I need, I need this for myself too. I'm definitely going to knit myself this sweater um, later. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And it goes all the way around. So I am knitting with Ficolana Tilia and this is the color 213. So beautiful and it is <laughs> paired with this one. It's a rather sharp red but it is, it's more like raspberry red. It's a little bit on the darker side and towards blue. So yeah, these two together is this one. And I'm very, very pleased with the colors. Um, the color is, um, is the favorite of the recipient. So yeah, this is flying by so quickly. Um, so my hopes is to finish this within uh, a week. And I think that is very, very doable. So yeah, that is my current knitting whips. And I have to show you my new needles. I had my birthday back in the very start of May and by the way thank you so so much for all of your wonderful birthday wishes. Um, it really warms my heart. I treated myself to a new set of needles and I originally wanted to buy one of the Lycke needles, the long tip Lycke needles. Uh, the blush set or one of the other sets, but then I came across a new to me set. I've never seen it before, but it's probably been there a while because it was on um, clearance sale. It's called Knit Pro Self Love. It's time to be happy. 
and yeah so I went for it so here they are these are um, wooden needles and it is the same system as for yeah all of the other Knit Pro series so we have these these cables in interchangeable cables in various lengths and it came with two pouches which I thought was so cute and in one of them were all the cables plus all of the you know stoppers like this one and all of the small gadgets you need to kind of undo the needles etc and in the other one there was a cute little bookmark because it also came with a knitting journal so cute I'm not sure whether I'm going to use this or not but um, yeah probably at some point so this is I paid for it all by myself so I'm not sponsored or anything but I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek I think that I will announce now the giveaway winners from my late April knitting chat and yeah it was a kind of a combination of celebration of spring and I don't know in the spirit of my May birthday as well as kickstarting the knit along of Norwegian independent knitting designers so yeah uh, based on the comments on my last video I have drawn totally randomly by a random comment picker uh, three winners that each get a um, single pattern made by one of the amazing Norwegian independent knitting designers. Um, it's a pattern of your choice, uh, so if your name is called out now, you need to contact me over at Ravelry, preferably, um, so that I get your like username on Ravelry and let me know which pattern you would like. Okay, so I have notes down here on my iPad. So the first winner is A Jane Treiber5773. Uh, congratulations! You are winning a pattern of your choice from one of the Norwegian independent knitting designers. And if you need uh, inspiration or something to refer back to or refer to, you can check out the list that I will link down below in my Ravelry group. Um, the other winner is Dorothy Rainley1141. Congratulations, Dorothy! And the third winner is Sika's Creative8241. So thank you so, so much to all of you who participated in that giveaway and congratulations to the winners! I hope that you find something beautiful that you want to knit and yeah, please let me know over at Ravelry. My Ravelry ID or my Ravelry profile is Ina Pina. So it would be great if you can just contact me over there. Um, send me a message and refer to your um, to your comments and let me know what pattern you would like as a price. Yes, so now I'm left with the summary from April. Um, 
I keep track in my little nerdy notebook <laughs> where I note down every knitting project that I work on. I note down when I start, when I finish, what yarn I'm using, what needles and etc. So yes, in April I finished seven projects and six of those were socks. <laughs> and if you look back on my previous episode you will probably know why I had I was on a 100% sock kick during a couple of weeks back in April. <laughs> so six socks and I also finished one pair of mittens. The yellow mittens. <laughs> yeah. I also started five projects and many of those socks were also started back in April plus the, the mittens. I knitted a total of 555 grams worth of yarn so that's out of my stash 555 gram. Into my stash was um, all of the yarn that I bought for this project, the Vilfreda by Venkeroal. I bought four balls of Vilcolana Tilia and four balls of Arvetta from Vilcolana. That is a total of 300 grams. And I also got the monthly subscription from Fru Fjellman, which I showed you last time. For um, I think it was for May, but it came in April, yeah. Uh, so 400 grams in total into stash and 555 out of stash. So I'm still, um, I'm still going strong when it comes to try and use more from a stash that, than what's going into stash. Um, the UFO status for April. I had 11 UFOs per April 1st and by UFOs as usual I mean um, whips and unfinished objects from previous, uh, from before 2024. I completed two of those in April. Those were two pairs of socks. So by May 1st I am left with nine, which I think is pretty good. That was April, my April knitting summary. Yeah, so that was about it. Um, I'm just <laughs> so happy that I managed to squeeze in um, a new knitting podcast this week, you know, due to what I told you about May 17th and this being a super hectic week. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to let you go now. Uh, I will thank you so, so much for watching. Um, if you like what you see, please consider to give it a thumbs up. And I would be super happy if you leave a comment. Uh, what are you up to this um, week in May? What's on your needles? I would love to hear that. And yeah, I um, be a subscriber if you're not. And if you're interested in more like chatting behind the scenes uh, in this from this family, this house, please consider to become a Patreon. Over there I publish weekly vlogs from our daily life, my knitting, I explain a little bit more what's going on and uh, I share all of my best knitting inspiration, Hygge vibes and yeah, right now there's some gardening vibes going on too. So. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!